I'm really excited to have you all here today. Um, a lot of, just a slide, folks, just a slide. Um, this is a topic that is near and dear to me, my research agenda, and a lot of the folks in this room. Um, and so I'm excited to be hosting a conversation here um, at the Media Lab on impact and assessment. Um, it is many things. Um, and we're going to try and cover as many of those things as possible as it might mean to this community. So who am I? My name is Erhard Graef. I'm a PhD student here at the Media Lab. I work in a research group called the Center for Civic Media, um, where we think a lot about these questions, especially evaluation and impact uh, for the work, the tools that we build, the research we do. Um, and we're part of a larger network of folks that some people call civic technology. Um, and there are conferences dedicated to civic technology, places like the Code for America Summit or Personal Democracy Forum, or this new one called Tic Tech. Um, and these different groups have in the past couple years started thinking more and more about impact evaluation. At Code for America Summit, there was an entire track entitled Performance and Analytics, um, where they were thinking about, you know, how do we... Um, how do we look at the data coming out of digital government work and actually make sure that it's doing the things and serving the people that it's supposed to? Um, at Personal Democracy Forum last year, they had, um, they had an entire session of plenary talks dedicated to getting to real change, which was about sharing stories of successes in civic tech and how people actually arrived at those. And then at Tic Tech, this is a brand new conference. Only its second iter iteration is coming out this, this spring. This is entirely about impact of civic tech, nothing else. The entire conference is dedicated to bringing together scholars and practitioners around this stuff. And so there's a moment of people thinking about these questions. And as I talk to other folks in this space, there is a lot of confusion about how do we actually do this work? We know it's important, but what is it? And of course, we start at this question of what is impact at all. And there's all these different ways to think about it. You can think about it in terms of change, right? That we're actually changing some sort of um, part of systems or society. Um, you can look at it using the framework that Le Lawrence Lessig has put out with laws, markets, norms, and code as different levers by which we could make change in the world. But it's also about learning. You gain something through ex exposure to, to some intervention or to education. You gain a sense of self-efficacy. This is really important in literature around um, political psychology. Like, do we actually feel empowered to do any of this work? And gaining that self-efficacy is a form of impact. We also have folks that are doing different types of artistic or creative work um, or creating experiences that change how we feel that give us a certain affect or emotion, and that is a form of impact, too, because it can change our minds on things. And then, you know, it's also about growing people together, building communities, building movements. This is how I've been thinking about impact. You may all have other ways to think about these questions, uh, but I just want to put that out there as one way of thinking about change. And then there's also the forms of evidence that we might take um, that help us think about whether or not this impact has happened. Um, impressions, what, what are people sharing? Their different beliefs that they have about the world, how are those changing? Um, statistics, this could be as simple as the number of people coming together around an issue. Um, or it could be the kind of more, um, um, more detailed statistical work of have we seen a statistically significant change um, in, terms of, uh, in terms of the output that we're studying. It's also products, we're doing design work, so people are actually building these things, and so those are a type of evidence. And stories, right? All of these things can be described as stories, ways that we're telling this story of, of change, um, and how do we collect those stories and share them? So why is this important to me? Why am I specifically hosting this event on this topic and asked you all to be here with me? Well, I've been thinking about this question in my own work from the, the perspective of young people and their role in civic technology and civic media. What, pl what role do they play in designing this work? And, and how are they a target audience for this design work? And I found in a lot of cases, they're missing. They aren't being included in the ways that we would hope they're being included. And in part, that's because we're measuring things that aren't measuring their learning and, and inclusion. And what measures is what matters. And you know, we hear that as a phrase a lot of times. And so that's why I think this is really important. I also build tools like Action Path, where I'm trying to, to understand how people might use a, a civic tech app um, and understand it from a more complicated form of, of goals, like learning, like sense of self-efficacy, and how do we study that. I'm also working on my PhD. 
And like many other PhD students, I'm interested in the magnitude of impact that I have through the work that I'm doing. And so how can I think about the work that I'm doing on impact in civic technology as a form of impact through my scholarship? Um, because why is this important to us? All of us here in this room, well, if we're to define this field of civic media, which is one of the kind of goals of this consortium, it's also important to define what success looks like. Do our interventions ever work? How does that um, create the boundaries of our, of our field and understand what a good case study looks like or what a good design is? We also need to think about those design because we're so tied to media and technology, right? These types of tools are what people are using for their interventions. They need to be designed. They need to be designed better. And how are we gaining some sort of experience and understanding about what would make them better? And then we also have to think about funders because we are academics or we are nonprofits or whatever. They are stakeholders in this too. Um, they have even a more explicit social impact mandate than we might have um, in our scholarship. And so we need to be responsible not only in representing this question to them, but also helping them shape how they think about it. Because I have heard again and again from funders in this space that they don't get it that they don't understand what's important to be studying, what the key outputs are. And so when they're trying to write these grant applications, they don't know what to ask for. And so we're at a moment where we need to be doing that funder education um, to help them think differently about this space. Why is it so hard? Well, research design is always hard. It's a conversation with your stakeholders as to what should be studied and how it should be studied. Um, instrumentation is hard. A lot of the th ways that we're trying to collect data haven't been invented yet. And we don't know the best ways to apply our methodologies. And so that is hard. And last but not least, it's hard to implement our research when we're trying to actively do interventions or study interventions in the field. Because these types of research can sometimes complicate the other goals that, that are primary to those, to those projects. Um, it's, I, I, I remember specifically at the first Boston Civic Media Consortium meeting, I had a conversation with Sarah Wiley. And she works on the Public Laboratory of Science and Technology. And I was talking about how I was interested in impact and assessment. And she said, you know what? We have a complicated relationship with that here at Public Lab. Because a lot of folks want us to think about how well we're doing our science, how well we're impacting our policy goals when it comes to thinking about environmental change in the world. And quite honestly, getting wrapped up in that detracts from our primary goals of education and organizing people about thinking how we should be doing this work, how we should be approaching our communities and our environment in new and different ways. And so we have to think carefully about impact and assessment in the space that we're a part of, and that's why we're here today. So thank you all for coming, and thank you to Becky, Catherine, and Willow for helping organize and run this. I'm looking forward to learning a lot from all of you today and in future conversations.